Hi, my name is Shane. I'm a lands and realty specialist with the Forest Service. I work here on the Colville National Forest. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about maps and how we use them uh, with the agency. So in my job, I use uh, maps, a lot of different maps. Uh, the topographic map is probably the more commonly one that we use. Um, it gives us a great deal of land features, which you know gives a lot of ups and downs, the big flat areas, how much water, uh, things like this. Um, and a lot of these maps too, they also show us man-made features for the, um, we have the pack trail. So if we needed to get up here, we realized we might have a little bit of access, uh, but to get to the trail, where, you know, where could we start? So we have roads. So again, these are man-made features. We can also see communication sites such as the uh, North Baldy communication sites. We can also see boundary lines between uh, our forest and the one that's adjacent to the east. And they're communicating um, you know, information in a variety of different ways. So when we're looking at a map, you know, we really have to ask ourselves a question, what is a map? It's in the simplest of terms, a map's just a picture. You can take a three-dimensional object like a soccer ball or the globe of the earth, and if you laid it completely flat, what it would look like. So if we take the soccer ball and we flatten it, I can still see the character of the ball. I can still see the, the patterns on the ball. And so it still uh, provides a good, useful reference. And even though I can't kick it, the map, a, a flat representation of that same, same object, that three-dimensional object, is still a useful tool so here's what the earth might look like if it were flattened. With every map, uh, there's going to be a number of features. Five that are essential is we need a title for the map, which is going to give us a reference point to which map are we looking at. We have a data frame, which is on the outside perimeter of the map and the image is on the inside of that. And on that data frame, there's going to be several different numbers. So we also have a scale, which is going to give us a lineal reference. We also have a north arrow, which is going to give us a north-south, sort of a cardinal direction. Uh, north maps are always uh, orientated to the north, so you want to make sure you keep that in mind. And then we're going to have a legend, and the legend is going to give us a definition of features. So it may talk about unimproved roads, it may talk about trails, and it may talk about um, water features, swamps, or, or buildings. There are three main systems uh, to tell us where we are on the Earth's surface. We have a latitude and longitude, which is old school and been around for many, many years. We have UTM, which is often used by military and international um, agencies because it's based on a metric system. Here in the United States, we use the Public Land Survey System. Uh, this is a system of squares that originate at a central point called a meridian. Uh, in Washington, Oregon, we use the Willamette Meridian, which is located down in Oregon. And then we use a, a number of lines to move up and away or down and away from that central point. So the two lines that we're going to use are called township lines and range lines. Uh, these lines are six miles apart and they basically start at the meridian and they'll either go north or south, which are your township lines, or they'll go range lines, which are east and west. So if we go up, Township one, range one, we're six miles up and we're six miles over. We're in that square, which represents that section of land. If we were at range 10 east, we would be in that square that is 60 miles east of that meridian. When we combine township lines and range lines, we get a square. The square is six miles by six miles. When we say township, we're talking usually talking about the square itself. Inside that square, are several other smaller squares, 36 of them. And they begin uh, in the northeast corner and they'll work their way back and forth. And each one of them represents a one mile square called a section. On a map, each of the section numbers are found within that one mile square. If we need to be more specific in trying to locate a feature, we can divide each of the sections into quarters. You'd have the northeast quarter, the northwest quarter, the southwest quarter, and the southeast quarter. And as before, each of those quarters can be divided into quarters as well. So you could have the northeast quarter in the northeast quarter. So in this case, the shaded area that we see on the map is the southeast quarter of the northwest quarter. If we want to describe the location of something on the map, we're going to start with the smallest and work our way to the largest. So for example, we would write the northwest of the northwest, identify section beginning with an S, township, beginning with a T, and then make sure you include a direction, north or south, and then range, beginning with an R, and then direction, east or west. Now that you know how to describe a location on a map, 
How do you determine a distance between two points? The map scale is the ratio between the map units and the ground units. For example, if I have a scale of 1 to 10,000, this tells us that for every inch on the map, we have approximately the same 10,000 inches on the ground. Because of scale, we can use maps to help us understand something that's far bigger than we'd see with our own eyes. It's a great example of a model that is used in the forest. Let's practice the math for scale. Since scale is a ratio, and ratios can be expressed as fractions, we can set up an equation to solve for x. On this map, we have two points, and if I use my ruler, I see that they're slightly greater than two and a half inches. They're actually 2.65 inches apart. We take the 2.65 and we'd multiply it times 24,000, which is our scale. One inch equals 24,000 inches. We come up with an answer of 63,600 inches. What's going to be important is to remember that whatever unit of measurement you're using and you do your conversion, you have to keep those units until you convert. So for example, if we measure in inches, our scale is going to equal inches until we do a conversion. An important feature of topographic maps are the contour lines. Contour lines on the map show the areas of the same elevation. These lines bring a map to life and are critical for determining accessibility of certain areas. Imagine that a mountain was cut horizontally in slices. The contour lines correspond with each slice. The legend will tell you what the contour interval is. Typically, it's 40 feet. As contour lines get close together, the slope gets very steep. As they get further apart, the area is very flat. With all the information on the map, it's possible to get a good impression of a location before we go there. Geographic information systems are another tool that gives scientists and foresters the ability to add other data to a map and then analyze that data in its own spatial context in relation to other features. Okay, for example, this GIS map shows two pieces of data overlapping, the treatment of a forested land and the instance of a wildfire. In summary, maps are an incredibly important tool essential for forestry and land management. I encourage each of you to review this information and practice using these skills on a regular basis so that you can be ready should you ever have to go in the woods with a map.